Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, let us see how to create a Neptune database. So first, go to search. Under this, you can see under databases, you have Neptune option. Just click on it so that your Neptune dashboard will open. You can see this is how our dashboard look like at first time. Since I have not created any databases till now, it will show me an option like Graph database under this launch Amazon Neptune. Just click on it so that from this way you can able to create your database. So first, in order to create it, your instance in EC2, what you create, what you click, launch EC2. In the similar way, here you can see an option launch Amazon Neptune. So just click on it so that from here your creation process starts. Under this, you can see the engine type. So here only one engine is available that is Neptune. Under this, multiple versions are available. You can choose the latest version so that it will be very helpful for you for current configuration, latest configuration. So that's why I'm choosing Neptune 1.0.2.2.R2. After that, just scroll up your screen. After selecting your Neptune engine and its version, then you have an option called settings. Under this, you need to specify the name of your cluster. So while creating your Neptune, what happens is it also creates a cluster for you and it also creates under that cluster some Neptune database instances for you. So for that, for creating cluster, what you need to specify is, you need to specify the cluster name. So whatever the cluster name that you specify, that must be unique across your region. So under the, under this Neptune, you need to remember this point, that is, your cluster name must be unique in the region. What are the region that you create under that? your cluster must be unique so that then only you can able to identify your cluster under that you can able to see your neptune database instances after this you have template we have two types of templates this production template when you you when you use this if you want high availability consistent performance in that case how high availability you got you got high availability by Multi AZ deployment. Multi AZ means sir, multi available zones deployment. If you don't want that, then click here. That is a development and testing. During development and testing, you use only a single instance. So by using that, you can able to develop as well as test your any ornament. So currently, let's move on with the production any ornament so that it will provide you much more options to click. So that, so that we can able to learn much more things so that that's why I'm preferring now the template is production. I'm just scrolling apart now. Under this, you can see database instance size. So what does this database instance class represent is you need to select a, a type for your instance so that it specifies your virtual CPUs and your memory for your Neptune instance. So you can assume this instance size, DB instance size, same as instance type in your EC2. So when, when you are choosing EC2 instance type, why we, what are the recommendations that you follow? Those you need to follow here as well. So here as well, like that many instance types are there based on your need of virtual CPUs and what are the storage that you want, you need to select an instance. Type. After this, after this instance size, you have availability and durability option. So by using this, you can able to specify multiple availability zone deployment is required or not. If you click here, then it will create a replica in different, re different zones. If you don't want this, 
multiple availabilities on deployment, then click on no so that it won't replicate your data. Only that means uh, what does it indicates? Only primary database instance is created and your read replicas won't be created. So let's see what are the database instance type we, we have available under this so that just click here so that you can able to see here. You can see here, you can see here multiple instance type options are available for me. From 2 GB virtual CPUs, I have 4 GB virtual CPUs, I have 8 GB virtual CPUs, I have 16 virtual CPUs, I have 32 virtual CPUs and 2 virtual CPUs. So based on the instance type and based on the size of it, we have variable virtual CPUs and their storage of RAM will be provided. So based on your requirement, you need to choose the respective one which is suitable for your application. So, so for current usage, I just choose the instance type size like this dbr4 dot large under this it provides me two virtual cpus and 15 gb ram so now coming to availability and duration so if you want you can choose multiple availability zone as this create a read replica in different zones so it will create you read replicas but currently i don't require so i click on no after this you have connectivity option you can see this connectivity indicates how how your Neptune should connect to your VPC that you need to provide under this. So based on the details that you provide here, your networking happens to your Neptune. So here you can see, we need to first select the VPC which indicates under which VPC you need to provide, you, you are expecting to provide your cluster. So if I select the default VPC, then it will be provided under my default cluster. After this, you have additional connectivity configurations as well. So if you choose this, then it can ask you for security groups as well as uh, subnets and which availability zone you have any specific preference, those details it will ask. Under this, you have tags. Let's see the advanced uh, connectivity configurations as well. So let me click there. You can see under additional connectivity configurations, there are multiple options that is security group under which security group you have. If you have any preference, then select your security group. Currently, I'm providing my VP security group as default security group and subnet group. This is under which subnet group you want to put and under what security group you want to provide. So those two things you need to provide on top of first it was asking about subnet group. So here you need to provide under which subnet you need to put. So I just clicked on default uh, VP subnet. And here also you can see under security group I provided only the default one. Since I am not having any availability zone preferences, no preference I have provided. If you have any preference then you select here under the preference. Coming to at last you need to provide database port. This database port is a TCP port where you can use to come, you can use to provide communication or data transfer. So at last you have an option called tags. So it is an optional. If you want, you can add tags up to 50 tags. If not, then just move it uh, up. After these tags, you have additional configuration. Previously you have seen additional configuration regarding connectivity for your cluster. Now you can see an additional configuration related to your database. If you click here, then you can able to configure database options, encryption options, failover options, backup enabled options, backtracking options, maintenance and cloud logs and delete production options as well. So let me click here so that we can able to see those configurations. As here you can see the additional configuration options. Under this, it was asking for database instance identifier. Previously, you provided database cluster identifier. Previously, you provided the identifier for cluster. Now it is asking for identifier for instance. For instance, this name, this name is used to identify your instance within your cluster. 
so since we choose only no so we can able to provide only one in it only provides us only one instance for our database so we are providing my identifier name for single instance so i just named like this and under this it will ask you database cluster parameter group under which cluster you want to place this that you need to select what are the previously provided what are the previously provided cluster that you need to select here for cluster parameter group here also same thing now iam database authentication if you enable this then iam db authentication will be happen database authentication that means so if you enable this you can able to manage your credentials that is database with iam user and iam roles credentials after this you can see fail over priority so if you have any priority that uh, to provide the primary instance for particular uh, read replica only then you need to choose it here under this priority if you have no such priority choose here no preference actually i am not having any priority so i choose no preference you can see backups so what does this backup sir it's a point time point in time snapshots for your database so what are the database that you are creating for that it's a snapshot nothing but backups so backup retention period means uh, which indicates how many days how many days your snapshot will be saved that that days you need to provide here so that up to those many days only your backup will be available if any of your instance will fail then you can able to use the available backup if your retention period is more then you can able to see that backup under the backups so that you can able to recreate that instance again easily by using this backups you can able to overcome the durability you can able to withstand with uh, during failure occur you can see i have selected my retention period as 3 days so under this under this i have an option called encryption if you click here then your database what are the database that you created that will be encrypted so i clicked here and if you enable it then it also ask you about master key that you need to specify how multiple multiple this is the create this is the master key that i have created this is the default one i just gone with the default one so that i click on this only after this you can see the log exports so if you select this then what happens is your logs will be published under cloud watch so that you can able to analyze what happening in this by using those logs as well so at last you can see i am role and maintenance if you scroll it up it will if you want that uh, if you want that logs to publish under cloud watch just enable it currently i am not expecting so i am remove i am just uh, leaving it as it is under the maintenance you can see if you have any minor updates that were coming under your uh, database instance so previously you have seen multiple uh, instances right while selecting your uh, instance type so like that under neptune you have seen uh, for that engine multiple versions are there so like that if any update of your version happens any neptune latest version update happens then if you enable this if you enable this then what happens is that automatically upgrade happen on your database as well if you don't want that then don't choose it actually it is recommended to enable this so that uh, your neptune latest version will be available for you so that you can able to access the latest features as well so click here under the maintenance window what does this maintenance window indicates this indicates if you want if you want to that means if you want to maintain any maintenance for certain window then you need to click on select window so that it can provide you a particular day and particular date particular time so that you can select so that your window will be comes under maintenance if you do not have any preference currently i am not having any preference so i select no preference so at last you, you can see the option called 
delete protection what it will do is whenever you enable it delete protection it will protect your database from accidental deletion so whenever this option is enabled you can't delete the database so this is how it will protect your database after this wow you reach the last step that is click on create database so after clicking create database since i am not expecting deletion protection so just i disabled that uh, enable deletion protection and then i clicked uh, create database you can see my database cluster it is and you can see under this you have database instance this database one is a cluster and database one instance one is a instance under this cluster you can say this has a primary instance first instance we call it as primary and what are the how many other instances are there those we call it as read replicas since i created only one instance i did not enable multiple availability zones so that's why it did not create read replicas so you can see the first status it will look like what creating after that it will reach to ready state you can see after some time the status will become available which indicates your currently cluster as well as your database instance are readily available for you so let's see what are the endpoints that are available for me to connect to this you can see under cluster for cluster database one represents what cluster if i select that you can see connectivity is done by using cluster endpoint or else reader endpoint this reader endpoint is used for what for reading your data so this cluster endpoint is used for what for reading as well as writing your data so i hope you understood these two endpoints now because in the previous video you have seen about these two endpoints you can see the port number as well by using this port number only the writing will happens or else uh, the data which is the data which we are requested for when we are reading that will be sent back by using this port number if you want to connect this to any ec2 instance then you must need to allow this port incoming traffic then only your ec2 instance will able to receive the message which was sent by using this neptune so this is these are the two endpoints and the last what we have we have instance endpoint that also we'll see by selecting the instance we have so before see, before going to instance endpoint you can see here monitoring you can able to monitor the logs or performance of this database cluster and you have log events logs and events and configurations maintenance and backups and tags so what are the details that you provided everything will be available here and everything related to monitoring also available here tools and maintenance and backups also available here and tags also available here so that based on your need you can choose anything so if you select if you select what are the instance what are the instance under this database database cluster then you can see the endpoint that is uh, this is the instance endpoint if you use this then you can able to connect to this instance then you can able to watch this instance so currently this is available in which availability zone eu west 1b you can see under which vpc security group it was available and by using which port you can able to communicate and everything we have available we have monitoring we have logging we have configuring maintenance and tags also available under this instance so what is this type of instance is neptune instance what is this database it's a neptune cluster so it's a cluster it's a instance you can see here writer so this is about uh, all about lab how to create your cluster neptune neptune cluster and neptune instances database instances for your requirement so i hope you understood from this video from console how do we create we can able to create our neptune cluster and neptune instances that means how can we be able to use this uh, neptune service in aws so i hope this video is contentful if you feel this video is contentful then please like share subscribe and hit the bell icon to get the latest updates see you back in the next video until then bye bye guys thanks for watching again